Simple Machines and Structures, a poem by Mr. J. Warman. Simple machines come in many different forms, inclined planes, levers, pulleys, and many, many more. They help make structures work and give them a use, but they all need energy to give them their juice. Structures that are big or structures that are small. Simple machines can work together to make them all. Structures such as buildings, toys, vehicles, or tools. They all need help to make them work. Isn't that so cool? Trains and cars rely on simple machines of their own kind. Simple machines are all over the place. How many can you find? They are in big or little structures, such as our favorite toys. They are so much fun to learn about for all the girls and boys. For wheat flour or cornmeal, the origin of the grinding power is the same. When the miller raises the head gate to allow water into the flume, he is harnessing the power of water that has been trapped in the mill pond. As the control gate is raised and water flows into the water wheel's buckets, it begins to turn. The attached ring gear turns as well. This gear is meshed with a pinion gear on the end of the mill's main horizontal drive shaft. Through several different power transfer systems, this long axle supplies the energy needed to operate all the machinery in the mill above. To grind wheat, the turning force of the mill's main horizontal drive shaft is transferred to a chain drive that rotates a secondary horizontal axle, a gear cluster, and a vertical spindle that takes power to the wheat grinding stones. The main drive shaft's chain drive also directs power to an intermediate drive shaft that powers a wooden crown gear. A small crown gear on a wooden vertical shaft transfers power up through all the floors of the mill, where gears, pulleys, and belts then transfer power to various machines. Wheat becomes flour at Yates Mill. Using Oliver Evans' 18th century technology, the process of turning wheat into fine flour is fully automated. The grain is weighed, then put into a bin connected to a grain elevator that carries it up to a rolling screen cleaner on the third floor where harvest debris is removed. Next, the wheat travels to a hopper and is fed through a chute down to a second cleaner known as a scourer located on the second floor. Here, finer dirt and debris is removed and blown outside. The cleaned grain is sent to the French burr millstones where it is ground into whole wheat meal. The friction of the grinding process makes the meal warm. A second elevator carries the warm meal up to the third floor where it is guided through another series of machines. The flour is spread out on the floor and cooled by a mechanized rake called the hopper boy then fed through a hole in the floor to an auger which hangs on the ceiling of the second floor that conveys the flour inside the bolter. The bolter's revolving hexagonal reel is covered with three different weaves of silk cloth that sift the flour from the cool wheat meal and separate it into three grades. A wooden auger in the bottom of the bolter then moves each grade of flour into one of the three bagging chutes that deliver the product back to the first floor. And that's how we make wheat flour at Yates Mill.